everybody. It's Shinobi, and this is episode 5 of Shy 256. So I'm going to be continuing my vague rambling on second layers with this episode. Uh, in the last two, I kind of made the abstract case for a meta protocol of sorts to kind of glue and coordinate between different second layers. And then in the, the next video, uh, kind of just walk through how that might uh, work in terms of a payment between those layers. And in, in this episode, I, I kind of want to take a look at how a meta protocol like this for second layers might impact overall scalability. And in, instead of just, you know, looking at the, the overall issues of, of a protocol like this, how it would work and what it needs, just the consequences um, that it could have for scalability. Because I really think that this is something people just don't understand the, the power of when, when you really start composing the, these second layers. You know, everybody tries to look at is scaling in isolation and, and nitpick individual flaws of single protocols or shortcomings of, of single layers. And they, they don't really recognize that when you start kind of composing these things, that a lot of those shortcomings really just, just melt away. They, they're not an issue in the long term. And, and I hope, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through uh, first, you know, just kind of the individual shortcomings of some layers. And then kind of just try to walk through an example of how things could work in the long term composing these layers and hopefully paint a picture to really just show how powerful this can be in the long term for scalability that, that anybody who listens, this, who listens to this can actually understand. So each layer of the, the Bitcoin stack in isolation suffers from its own inability to scale. And I mean, this should be obvious to anybody who's been around for any, any decent amount of time. The, the main chain can only theoretically process 14 transactions a second and in practice much less than that. That is absolutely not scalable as a global payment system. Uh, just a single thing like Visa does tens of thousands of transactions a second. That does not need much in-depth explanation. Um, side chains shouldn't need uh, much in-depth explanation either. I mean, they're just other blockchains. So they'll have the exact same shortcomings as the main ones. That itself isn't a, a, an actual scaling solution either. And even things like Lightning Network, when you look at them in isolation, is, you know, the, the conclusion of the original Lightning White Paper uh, stated that the requirement for 133 megabyte blocks in order to scale the Lightning Network to 7 billion people only opening two channels a year, that's, that's, that doesn't scale at all. That, that type of centralization on the blockchain would destroy it. And even if you did that, only two channels a year, the idea that a human being would only create two economic relationships in a year is absurd. So like, you know, none of these things scale. So what do you really do about that? Like, how, how does that come out looking nice at the end of the day? It, you start putting them together. I mean, you know, the, the main blockchain can only process theoretically 14 transactions a second, but if you stick a side chain on top of that, it can process more. If you stick the lightning network on top of those things, it can process more. Like none of these things scale alone, but when you start putting them together, it, it scales the, the whole thing together. And, and really, you know, th this is what I'm, I'm going to try to show here. And so now I I'm going to kind of go into a, a concrete example of just how I would see all of these layers gluing together to really just enable crazy scaling uh, at, at a massive level by gluing these levels together in the long term.
The year is 2040. You are flat broke. The world is completely powered on Bitcoin. It is post hyper Bitcoinization. That there is no other form of money. You are about to get paid by your employer, and it is completely uneconomical for you to interact as an individual on the main chain. How do you get your hands on Bitcoin that you control in a trustless manner? I'm betting that you think you can't. Well, here's what happens. Your employer shoehorns you into a state chain that some company out there operates. Uh, a, a number of state chains doing this kind of thing. And you get put into a channel factory on top of that state chain with tens of other thousands of people, people who are getting paid by their employers, people just switching over to other channel factories, just a whole rush of people rearranging liquidity. And you just, you just get shoved into a state chain channel factory with some federation like that. Okay, well, the first step is accomplished. Okay, you have, you have your hands on Bitcoin, but it's not trustless. It's not under your complete control because of that federation involved in the state chain at the bottom of this, at the, the state chain, the channel factory on top, and all of the other channels until you get to the, the individual channel you control. All of that is on top of a federation that can collude with previous participants in that state chain to rob everybody. Okay, so we're partway there. You have your Bitcoin, but it's not trustless. You can be robbed. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Simple. After some set period of time, maybe 10 minutes, maybe an hour, it depends on how often people are cycling through these kinds of services. That transaction representing the state chain is submitted to the main chain. That confirms, and now all of a sudden there's just this channel factory with these tens of thousands of people in it. And that state chain no longer has any influence or control over it. It is just a completely decentralized channel factory under the total control of everybody involved in it. And everybody has trustless control of your money. You did not make a single transaction on chain that was just you transacting on chain. That one transaction took tens of thousands of people out of a trusted federated environment and dropped them seamlessly into a decentralized and trustless environment. And there we go. That's, that's, that's your day. That's, that's the, the, the hour of your day in the process that you went through in that hour to get paid. And now in 2040, in a hyper Bitcoinized world, you have Bitcoin under your control completely trustlessly in a channel factory that can scalably process your payments all over the world. And it happened by taking all of these individual layers that do not scale on their own and just gluing them together. And so I, I really hope that, you know, listening to this, this specific video and the, the concrete example I just walked through, that you can really start to picture just how powerful composing all of these individual second layers together with some kind of meta protocol is. You know, I, to, to really just grasp the significance of being able to take all of these individual pieces that alone just don't scale and put them together into what is a unified, scalable system when you put it all together. And, you know, it's really, I hope at the end that this is kind of just put to bed this myth that Bitcoin is not scalable. And I hope the next time you actually, you know, hear somebody say that or try to make that argument to you, you really think about, you know, everything I've said here and consider the fact that they just really don't understand this stuff, that they do not understand the nature of all of these, these layers that have been designed 
to be built on top of Bitcoin, that they're looking at them as individual pieces in isolation and not seeing the greater whole that comes when you compose them all together. You know, this is, this is really the, I think the end of the day where all of that comes from. And, you know, hopefully if, if it can be conveyed in the proper way, it, it can really show just how insanely scalable Bitcoin as an overall system is and just finally put to bed the myth that Bitcoin does not scale. It does.